Number 24. The wheels of a mid-sized car exert a force of 2100 newtons backward on the road to accelerate the car forward. If the force of friction including air resistance is 250 newtons and the acceleration of the car is 1.80 meters per second squared, what is the mass of the car plus its occupants? All right, so free body diagram. So let's draw the axes, okay? Now it says that there is a, now the car is exerting a force right backward on the road, okay? So what you might think is you might think to say, okay, let me write the force in like this in my problem. Okay, now it really won't make too much of a difference if you do that. Um, I, what, by the way, what I'm assuming is that we have a vehicle and it's accelerating this uh, direction. So its wheels are pushing back on the road to accelerate itself forward. So if you drew this, you know, in this direction here, it is wrong if you're talking about the car moving to the right uh, side. Why? Well, because the force that's applied to this vehicle, if it is accelerating to the right-hand side, must also be applied to the right-hand side. So you might say, well, wait a minute, but they told me it's backward in the problem. Well, you have to remember that the car is pushing backward on the road, but the road is pushing forward on the car. So it is this force. It's the force that the road is exerting on the car. That's the important force because we want to talk about what are the forces applied to the car. Now, the car is applying a force to the road, that's fine, and that's backwards, but that's not the force we need to describe this motion. We need the force that the road is applying to the car. And in Newton's third law, that force is equal but opposite. All right, It's a minor thing. You probably wind up getting the question right anyway, assuming that then you uh, place the frictional force in the opposite direction. But I just want to be clear about that. So this is the 2100 newtons. Then it says that there is an air resistance, right? A friction, whatever, blah, 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 of 250 newtons. So that opposes motion. Remember, friction always opposes the motion. So this is going to be 250 newtons. Okay, wonderful. And it says that the car is accelerating 1.80 meters per second. Now, given my diagram, there's a specific way that the car will accelerate and will be accelerating to the right, right? Because the net force will point in the same direction as that acceleration. And then this problem is fairly easy, but when the problems become, become more complex, it's important to keep these, uh, these ideas in mind. Now, how can I put this all together? Well, I'm considering uh, this in the X direction, so let's use now the some of the forces in the X direction. So some of the forces in the X direction should equal the mass, the combined mass of everything that is, multiplied by the acceleration in that X direction. So what are the forces in the X direction for the problem? Well, we have the 2100 Newton force, right? That the road is applying to the car. And then we have the wind resistance or air resistance that the air is applying to the car, right? And that value is negative, right? Because it, it, take a look at the picture, this value pointing in the positive X, this value is pointing in the negative X. So that should be minus 250. And that should equal the total mass of the car plus it and all of its occupants, because that's the thing that is accelerating, multiplied by its rate of acceleration of 1.80. So now this is fairly straightforward, right? To solve this, just divide out the 1.80, 1.80. So the mass now of the vehicle is going to be 2100 minus 250 divided by 1.8. And it comes out to 1,000. We'll do 1,000. 30 for three sig figs, okay? And that's in kilograms, because that's what the mass is. In kilograms, when you use F equals MA. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this helped. Problem wasn't too bad, not too hard. What else isn't too difficult is to hit that subscribe button. That would be awesome. I would so greatly appreciate it. It would mean a lot to me. So thank you very much, and I look forward to teaching you in the next lesson.